Not even punters like Dan Pastorini were able to escape getting hit hard. Jim Mandich is less concerned with recovering the football than he is blasting into Dan's knee. Then number 51 Larry Ball rams a right forearm to Dan's helmet. Dave Washington picked off Jim Plunkett, and number 30, Carl Garrett, took exception. When number 41, Alvin Wyatt, joined the skirmish, Garrett put the slug on him too. This is my eighth Hard Hits and Cheap Shots video. The other seven videos have a total of over 730,000 views as of April 12th, 2024. So please check them out in the Special Features section of my playlist. Let's get after it. Nineteen seventy two was Terry Bradshaw's third NFL season, and he took some shots. Dan Pastorini was in his second year, and he took weekly beatings too. AstroTurf in 1972 was basically a nylon carpet laid on top of concrete. So when a player was tackled hard, you can imagine the level of pain that was experienced. The club to the ball carrier's helmet was a commonly used tactic to daze the opponent, and if you could stick your fingers through the face mask like demonstrated here, that worked too. Just about anything to get him out of the game or at least make him less effective.
Bears Jimmy Gunn knocked Scott Hunter woozy and out of the remainder of this week nine contest. OJ Simpson was the Bills offense, so if you could knock him out of the game, you had a likely win. Larry Brown was one tough running back. He took a lot of hard shots, but also gave out his share too. Giants number 64 is John Mendenhall. 255 pounds and Brown left him writhing in the end zone. Brown gave away 60 pounds. Walt Garrison was a Cowboys running back and a real Cowboy as well. Few running backs have been tougher. John Brockington was fast, weighed 225 pounds, and caught the crown of Ron Smith's helmet in a very sensitive body region. Smith ended up in La La Land. Not many running backs win one-on-one -on -one battles with Jack Tatum, but Brockington did. Whoa! Jack Tatum gets steamrolled but still holds on to make the tackle. Now that's football. Here's number 37, Sid Edwards again. At 6'3", 230 pounds, he packed a big punch. Vikings Bill Brown and Dave Osborne were a couple of rough and tumble running backs.
Dick Butkus only played one more year after 1972 due to bad knees, but he was still as menacing and intimidating as ever. Alan Page was the NFL's MVP in 1971, and he was on top of his game. The Dallas Cowboys had their own superstar defensive tackle in Bob Lilly. Nicknamed Mr. Cowboy in Dallas, his nicknames in college at TCU were Tiger and the Purple Cloud. Back in the day, they used to nickname anyone who played on a punt or kick return team as someone who played on the Suicide Squad. Holder number 18 is Sam Weich, and the Giants number 45, Pete Athis, got under his skin. Even the referees were tough back then. This guy bounced right back up. This part of the video shows defensive players receiving a cheap shot. Guard Dan Sullivan was in the last of his 11th season, so he was well versed in seeing dirty play. Here he swats Leary Wilson south of the border. Number 63, Chuck Walton gave a yank to Carl Kosalki's face mask. Who's going to see it? Center Jim Otto didn't think it was too late to hit Tom Casanova. Franco Harris used to deal out some shots during his rookie year of 1972.
Wide receivers used to pay a heavy price in 1972. 